You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Downloadable audio podcasts can be found at the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, uh, author, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. We're locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. And today we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from China Moon, the owner of Bartender 608. So China, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm excited. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited because we could talk about drinking, drinking in Wisconsin, <laughs> right? That's always a good thing. Yeah. So Bartender 608. Mm -hmm. Let's start with what is Bartender 608? Bartender 608 is a luxury mobile bartending service. We provide bartenders, barbacks, rum runners, and servers uh, for people having weddings, graduation, uh, different var a variety of events in Wisconsin, Iowa, and Northern Illinois. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me, so I know bartenders. Mm -hmm. What is a rum runner? I just think of someone in a yeah, NASCAR kind of thing. <laughs> A ballback rum runner is something is uh, someone uh, who is able to assist the bartenders so that they can always be at attention for the guests. Gotcha. So if they need more liquor, if they need more ice, uh, mixers, anything like that. All right. So literally running for rum for the bartender. Exactly. Got it. All right. I should have known that. <laughs> and I'm sorry, the third one that you said? Uh, servers. Servers. Okay. Yes. So tables, mm -hmm. just so typical if they server? Want actual service or uh, say they want um, wine service, table service. All they right. Offer that as well. Nice. And the, what was the fourth one? That was it. That was it. That okay. Was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bartenders, rum runners, servers. All yes. right. So how do you get into a business like this? Um, been bartending since 1995. All right. Um, a variety of places um, in New York City and then here in the Midwest. Um, uh, bartended uh, for a variety of people in New York, um, kind of uh, logoed myself as bartender 718, you know, for the city. Nice. Um, but then, you know, when I was here full time, when my daughter was young, started um, moving around and bartending at a, no, uh, a number of places, mm -hmm. a lot of places like that are not around anymore here, like Segredo, the Cardinal Bar, things like that. So The Cardinal, I remember yeah. the Cardinal, all yeah. right. So those wow. were fun spaces, and the people would always ask me, you know, I'm having a party. Can you, you know, come, come through and bartend for us? And I'm like, well, so this is big on East and West Coast. Mm -hmm. You know, there must be a market for it here. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you decided to start your own business. You're yes. like, hey, and at the time you have a young kid, right? Yes, at the time, yes. How young are we talking? Uh, 95 is when she was born, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you're like, hey, I'm going to start this business. Mm -hmm. And was the idea to have it be a side hustle on top of the other bartending jobs? Yep. And just kind of make a little money on the side? side. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. When did it turn into a full-time gig for you? When uh, people were like, you know what, you really have a knack for this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, so I did some market research and I'm like, oh, well, you know, um, there were some places that, uh, like for example, I'm a dry hire, so uh, I do not have a liquor license. Mm -hmm. um, so we provide everything but the booze. So right. if you have your own backyard or barn or vineyard, what have you, we come in and bring everything else. So you do not have to worry about schlepping a thousand pounds of ice, slicing a bunch of fruit, mm -hmm. anything like that. So we want to make sure that you are entirety, your entirety can focus on your guests. Got it. All right. So I think you're kind of alluding to this, and this is one of the questions that I've had as far as alcohol, servicing, licensing, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I imagine every state's different. Absolutely. And a lot of states, I guess we were talking about earlier, just the rules on alcohol are weird. Yes. Crazy outdated. And strict. <laughs> yeah, strict and not, um, arguably not conducive to doing business very easily. They're not. Um, when I lived in the town of Blooming Grove, um, mm -hmm and went, uh, went before the board. So I had um, three licenses, beer, wine, and spirits, um, and it was $350. Okay. Then the law was passed, and then it blew up. Basically, I went from $350 to 10 Gs. $10,000? So, mm -hmm, that is the reserve to have a liquor license, if they grant you one here. Holy cow. <laughs> what is the goal? Like, on, on their end, I like to think that when they come up with laws and rules, I like to believe that they're, they're going for something positive. I don't always agree with that, but I like to believe that they don't have negative will or negative intention. Right. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes things are hard, you know, that uh, 
Wisconsin wants to be a place for small businesses and sometimes, but sometimes uh, there's a lot of red tape if you don't know where to go or who to ask for help. All right. um, so that's a big thing. Um, getting in touch and networking and being around the right people mm -hmm. um, is a big part of things. All right. um, I'm perfectly happy being a dry hire right now, um, but um, if that changes like in the next year or so, then that's something that you know we'll put um, more of our reserves to. Mm -hmm. But right now we're fine. Um, a lot of things are at people's residences um, and a lot of the, the neighborhood barns mm -hmm. um, and um, Blue Mounds and Mount Horeb and things of that nature, so. Yeah, well, they have their own license and all that kind of stuff? No, or? they just have the venue because gotcha. what we usually do are private events. So if you're having a wedding, it is not open to the public, it's private. Right. You bring the booze, we can serve it. It's an open bar, there's no cash, so everything is on the up and up. All right. Interesting. That just seems like something when you learn out about either shipping alcohol mm -hmm. or just driving with alcohol across state lines. Yeah, it, just it seems it's so archaic. It is. Like for example, in Wisconsin, if it's very important that I work with the client so that I know what type of drinkers their clients are and their guests are, mm -hmm. of clients being that if it's a corporate event, mm -hmm. um, making sure that they know how much beer, wine, and spirits to acquire so they don't have a lot left over because mm -hmm. you can't return it. In Illinois, you can. So oh. it's always making sure that you are that you know really? where you are, yes. Like you buy a bottle of vodka and then later you're like, eh. Like we bought too many bottles yeah. and most places, yeah, they you can return it in the state of Illinois. Oh, wow. I didn't even dawn on me that you would return that, but I guess that's Wisconsin thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Tell me about the when you moved from it being a full-time gig to now you got employees. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, uh, at first I had independent contractors because things were not, you know, there wasn't a steady schedule. Right, I imagine um, weekends, nights, it's kind of seasonal to a point. I it is, but I was still working, you know, most of the gigs myself. Mm -hmm. I don't um, go, t I don't work, you know, most of the gigs I don't, I don't work, you know, nice. anymore, you know. Um, unfortunately, um, I had COVID in February of 2020, um, so it, it is very nice that I have um, rock steady employees, you know, who are awesome. Nice. Um, and so gave me time to, you know, heal up. Um, mm -hmm. We usually do 100, 150 events a year, and in 2020, we only did five. So you can imagine oh. the, <laughs> the, Ouch. The, the, the pain <clears throat> of that, so. Yeah. yeah. Hundred, you said 100 to 150 mm -hmm. events. That mm -hmm. is a lot of events. You're mm -hmm. talking three a week. Yeah. Wow. So we used to do up to three events per day, but since there are so many variants, we're now doing up to two events a day. Okay. Um, so if someone gets sick or calls in, we have a reserve, so we don't want to stretch ourselves too thin. Right. Um, so there may be like, um, you know, let's say there's a family reunion on Saturday and and Mount Horb, and then someone's having something in here in Sun Prairie. Mm -hmm. We can send out those two teams um, right. to those events. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Tell me about employees as far as finding them. Uh, a lot of them, um, sometimes I put ads out, but usually the ads come from, the intake comes from the employees I already have, and so they're referring people that they know. So it's more oh, of a, nice. a close-knit, okay. you know, uh, very close-knit, you know, environment All right. uh, for them so and most of what you guys are doing from uh, serving drinks and stuff like that are they mixing or is it serving beer and shots or something like that or yeah so when you're having an event we'll ask um, we have five different uh, packages that are popular mm -hmm. popular packages <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, and let's say that you're having just a standard event. Mm -hmm. And so it'll ask you on our event cinch quoting f platform that we have, are you gonna be having like two part cocktails? So you just need a bartender, you know, beer, wine, Jack and Coke, whiskey, gingers, you know, All right. vodka soda, that type of thing. If mm -hmm. that's it, fine, you know, you have your, you know, regular bartender. Um, at a little bit of increase, you have your bartender and toxicologists. All right. Um, so those are the people that are going to be actually muddling your old fashions. They're going to be stirring your uh, Manhattans. Um, they're going to be making your Negronis and Sazeracs and things like that. So All right. it just depends on what the feel of the event that you're going for and what kind of cocktails that you're looking for. Nice. I was just at a drink mixing class 
a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it never dawned on me how much of a, I guess, art and science comes down to mm -hmm. mixing drinks. Yeah. Like, I was normally just like, boop, boop, yep. boop, but <laughs> I'm not a bartender. <laughs> I could totally do the entertaining, having fun with the guest thing, but when it comes yeah. to mixing a drink that's actually good, uh, I'm probably not your guy. Yeah. So that is cool. Yeah. That is interesting. From a personality standpoint, was it tough to find people that are cool, talking with people and interacting with them? As far as employees? Yeah. Uh, no. A lot of the people um, that worked with me previously and some that work with me now, we've worked together in previous positions. So All right. I know their background. I mm -hmm. know how they are, you know, behind the wood, behind yeah. the bar. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's all gravy. All right, <laughs> nice. And you, speaking of the bar, you guys bring in your own bar, I imagine, right? Yes, okay. so we have uh, various bars, uh, back bars. Um, we don't have a rig. A lot of people use the, um, the old uh, horse trailer rigs oh. um, to, to, to wheel them in. Um, I'm looking at something a little bit bigger, but we do have, uh, I call it the 608 and toxicology tent. <laughs> so it's a huge pop-up tent with a flag with a giant flaming martini, has built-in counters, wow. um, has a pagoda tent to keep, you know, uh, if it happens to rain, keep everybody dry, mm -hmm. keep the sun out, which is a very, people don't understand if we are at outside gig. Oh yeah. And let's say, you're, let's say your wedding is six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. Our day is about 12 hours long, including travel and everything like that. So mm -hmm. us being outside is very important that we have adequate shade. <laughs> well, I bet. And just <laughs> imagine the ice, the liquor, right? Yeah. Here's your warm beer. No. <laughs> Thanks, warm guys. beer is not, it's no. No. We will not be serving that. <laughs> All right. All right. So from an equipment point of view, when you first started your business, mm -hmm. did you have to build the bar? Or do you, how do you end up with a bar, a rolling bar? Um, you can buy them. I mean, they're not oh, yeah. as pre they're not as prevalent. They were not as prevalent back then as they are now. Okay. But I mean, you can make a bar from a six or eight foot table. All right. You just want to dress it up. Make sure you have nice linens and everything like that. Table clips. Where right. they're gonna, um, you know, have it flat. You're gonna have um, little ruffles in the front. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the accents count a lot. All right. <laughs> now tell me about. Um, I'm trying to think. I had to get my a temporary server's license for. Something that was happening on the square. Taste of Madison, I want to say. Yes. Years ago, years and years and years ago, because it was some fundraiser. And I remember taking this little test, and it talked about over-serving. Yes. And the liability that's on the bartender. Yes. And I was like, I'm just volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> this is a huge potential for liability, which seemed to kind of be like, eh, whatever, just take the test, not a big deal. But I imagine for you guys, where it's a, it's a, business mm -hmm. it's probably as big of a deal as it seemed to be to me when I was taking that test absolutely so we have um, uh, we just had our meeting um, in March on Saturday March 5th where all the employees come in um, we go over our employee handbook we go over our training manual um, and things like that basically getting ready for the season mm -hmm. um, everyone is required to take the four-hour responsible beverage course that's probably what you're talking about mm -hmm. um, usually it's with tips 360 training or learn to serve so that they know what's going on over serving and all of that yeah. and then depending on what county or town or area you're in you receive that license for that all right. Um, it's also important to know that we are insured we carry two uh, million dollars insurance so all right. um, you know, so that, and we do, of course, workers' comp, so we take care of our employees. Mm -hmm. When did you move from the essentially independent contractors when it's kind of sporadic to employees, things get more consistent? Um, we moved to that, I believe, in 20, last year, I believe. Okay. Yeah, 2021. And was that a tough move for your crew or for you or? Nope, they still get paid. Our payroll is weekly, okay. and then our sales manager gets paid monthly. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they get paid every week. Um, gratuity is usually day of, depending on what's going on. But sure. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Now you mentioned you have a salesperson. Yes. So how do you find a salesperson for selling stuff like this? Yeah. So it was uh, uh, our new salesperson is Michael. Um, so him and I did some onboarding. Um, his background does a lot with sales and actually working with uh, uh, beer and spirits. So oh. that was awesome. So right. we didn't really have to step back and then have a whole outlook on that. So 
Nice. Yeah. And is he, he's running around town saying, hey, you want to get married? When you, <laughs> when you get married, you want drinks? <laughs> no, he, um, he works remote, and, but we, the number of leads that we're coming through, we don't really cold call or anything. Oh, um, there's that many. Coming in, yeah. Wow. So okay. having the, the networking, um, we do run ads online like Google, Facebook, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but a lot of income just comes to our website and All we're right. working through um, just working through our leads. Okay. So we, we want to make sure that we want to work with people who want to work with us. So yeah. let's say that, you know, you thought you were interested in the in, in us, mm -hmm. but you're not or whatever. I just say, you know, don't ghost us. Just, you know, just let us know because yeah. we want to make it the best experience possible. We don't want to bug you. <laughs> right. So we just want to make sure that you want to work with us and we want to work with you. All right. Very cool. I'm trying to think way back when. This was probably two or three years ago. I interviewed Jody Everts, who had, I think she re or sold it shortly after. Uh, it was a website that connected businesses or vendors that had stuff to do with weddings. Okay. The website is escaping me, which that was their old business. I should remember that. <laughs> <clears throat> but do you work, I guess, alluding to the question, do you work with any companies like that that will essentially feed leads? from people, brides presumably, or grooms, potential grooms, that are going to figure out, hey, I got this wedding to plan. Who do I go to for dress, flowers, photographer, mm -hmm. <coughs> all that stuff? Do you end up on uh, working with groups like that? Um, we work closely with uh, Wed Plan, um, okay. who does the huge wedding show in January, all which right. we were just at, at the Lion Energy Center. Oh, nice. Um, so we do that, and we had, um, a huge number of leads uh, from that. Um, we handed out uh, a lot of mocktails so that people could see, you know, what what we do. Mm -hmm. um, What's a mocktail? A mocktail is a non-alcoholic cocktail. All right. Um, people saying they're getting more prevalent now, but we've been doing them since 2007. Like you're which, talking about a sprite in a fancy glass? Or? <laughs> no. So these are. Let's say that you you have people that don't drink. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we'll mix up um, some um, uh, some nice purees, like a blackberry, pur a blackberry puree oh. um, with some lemon juice, um, and then muddle that with some lemon and orange, and then strain that out, and then top it with some kava, like of some sparkling wine. All right. So you want to make sure that Long are the, long gone are the days where it's just like, okay, you don't drink, here's some coffee, here's some soda, here's some juice. Yeah. You want their time to be <clears throat> exponentially awesome, and you want their drink to look as pretty and fancy as everyone else's. So. All right. That sounds super, more than <laughs> fancier than just Sprite in a glass. Yes. That is cool. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that's a whole other science, putting stuff like that together. It's just basically making sure that you have flavors that go together. Mm -hmm. A little chemistry. <laughs> All right. So when, like me, just dumb James here, if I would go to a wedding and I would see something like that, mm -hmm. I would be amazed and I wouldn't even know what to order kind of thing. And that's where your intoxicologists come in handy. You All know, right. even, if, even with uh, being at a bar and some of that, we're always there to help. Mm -hmm. um, just to go back briefly, when I was talking about Wed Plan, yeah. um, we do get a lot of referrals from like Pam at Bridal Barn and Gardens, okay. um, uh, uh, Blue Mounds, um, Prevailing Winds Lodge, a lot of venues that we work closely with. All um, right. So they have our brochures out, they have our website out, and they like working closely with us because of our consistency mm -hmm. and again, our level of luxury and professionalism. That is awesome. You alluded to it earlier, and again now, tell me about the luxury part. Because that's, <laughs> that's just cool. I like that. Um, when we started out, we were basically, not everything for everybody, but it was just basically, you know, if you're having an event, this is us. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we had um, more of a delicate touch and our presentation was, was better. All right. um, so we, need, we wanted to make sure that things that we had were more on the up and up, more on the, um, not like on a Bugatti scale, but you know, just <laughs> basically, you know, we, we didn't want to be just with the masses. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot more uh, mobile bartenders around. Okay. Um, but more than there were when you first started? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Um, 
So I, I just wanted us to step our game up, basically. All right. And I wanted to be work very closely with guests. Um, so um, I just wanted to make sure that we could give the best of what we have. And mm -hmm. there was so much more, excuse me, in me that I'm like, we need to take Bartender 608 to the next level. All right. And tell me how, what does the, the consumer see? I guess maybe not necessarily the... The person paying the bill, <laughs> the person like <laughs> the person walking up to the bar. What do they see that separates you guys? Um, they'll see usually a nice backdrop, um, making sure that we have uh, certain things. Again, we have the nice tent, you know, as our rig. We might add like some floral decor, some balloons. We'll All also right. add um, some things for the signature cocktails, including maybe some dry ice effects oh. um, to that nature. Um, we'll have certain. Um, uh, specially cut garnishes. Uh, we have the update, uh, the the upscale cherries. Like instead of those bright red cherries mm -hmm. you get with dessert or what have you, we'll have the nice um, bourbon cherries or Luxardo cherries, the Italian cherries um, wow. of that nature. I didn't even know so that was a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> it sounds awesome. <laughs> They're perfect for old fashions in Manhattan's. All right. Mm -hmm. It's not just a waxy cherry kind of. No. No. <laughs> James. James. No. James. James. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. So does it take a little bit to train the employees, your crew, to get them to that level or to understand that this isn't just a another venue or just another place that you're taking it to a luxury level? Yeah. I mean, we. I know, again, I know the employees that I work with. I know their background. Mm -hmm. um, but we do need to take time to let them know this is how we're doing things. This is how things go. So, you know, we'll set up a bar area. This is how everything should go because mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that our area is always nice and neat even when things get hairy because at a wedding you have to be mindful that photos are going to be taken. So mm -hmm. you don't want a bunch of trash and everything behind you. You want to make sure that you have adequate linen so you can hide things under the bar, under the back bar and things of, you know, things like that. Gotcha. Yeah, the reason I ask is because with my business, calls on calls, the call answering, I like to think we're above a typical call answering mm -hmm. service. And I feel like in the day-to-day, -day, people can gradually drop down. Mm -hmm. Just because they get so busy, sometimes they forget to keep it next level. Because mm -hmm. work to, to stay next level. Yeah. It's work to become next level and to stay there, like there's a, re there's a reason a lot of companies don't do it. So I feel like I have to remind, like, this is who we are, this is what we do, we're super awesome rock star unicorns. <laughs> Let the other people be the... I don't know, dead llama or whatever the opposite <laughs> of that is. <laughs> Something, whatever it is. Yes. Um, but it's, uh, I feel like I have to, I don't want to say constantly, but I probably have to constantly remind mm -hmm. them. And a lot of times they're like, yeah, James, we know, but a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, as an employer, it's your responsibility to keep on your, on your employees. Um, I want to make sure that I'm always... Um, in communication with my employees and that my employees are happy because they are the direct line between Bartender 608 and the public. Yeah. So I need to make sure that if there's anything that they don't understand, if they are confused about something or something is unclear, that I'm their first point of contact, mm -hmm. you know, to work on that. Um, yeah. our, our scheduling uh, app that we use they can send messages to them to, to me to the other employees oh, um, cool. they can see who they'll be working with they'll have all the details um, when they go on their event let's say the event is on let's say it's a corporate event on Friday mm -hmm. see by Tuesday or Wednesday they'll get an event order and a timeline all right and then they'll actually get that in their email and then once they're at the event they'll have a hard copy um, that's laminated as well so when you say timeline, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so they'll have a timeline. So they'll be like, okay, what time does the event start? But what time does the bar start? What time is last call? What time does the bar close? What time does the event close? All right. And then they'll have on the event order, what are we serving? Um, so let's say they're going to have just a beer and wine bar. So the, we're going to have like, they're going to have these two types of beer, these types of wine. Okay. Ales, lagers, what type? You know, a lot of people that are, most people here in the corporate, they know what Spotted Cow is. Mm -hmm. A lot of people from out of town don't know uh, what New Glarus Brewing is. They don't know it's a farmhouse ale. And Crazy yes, it's, talk. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be cloudy and, you know, mm -hmm. 
so it's it's our job to um, educate the guest and right. what we're serving. So it's always important that once we book the event and then uh, before the event, 30 to 45 days, depending on how soon they book us, you have, they, we're, we send them a final questionnaire with what will we be serving so that we're prepared for the guests. All right. All right. That never even dawned on me that someone could pour a spotted cow and somebody would be like, what is this? Yeah. What is this dirty beer? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So funny. For those of you that don't know, Spotted Cow is a big deal around here. Yes, and only sold in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny because I got family around Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and they're like, bring some Spotted Cow, cow. when you come and visit. Yeah. And like, it's good, but it's not, I don't know, it's not bring masses across the border good well, in my mind. You but. know, that's in the, 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 the palate of the beholder. Totally, totally. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like some of it's um, just uh, the rarity or scarcity of it. Mm -hmm. I think that comes into play a little bit. But yeah. Whatever. It's mm -hmm. all good. It's fun. It's fun. Um, are there any venues or things that people have asked you to serve at that you're just like, eh, you're not a good fit? I can't imagine what that would be, but I'm always uh, curious. No, but okay. I do, I do not stress, but... Um, you know, when I do correspond with people, I just want to make sure that we are a good fit for one another. Okay. So that's the only thing that would, there's not really any drinks that we, you know, wouldn't make. Um, but, I mean, like, for example, if someone wants, like, a little show, we don't do flare bartending, like flipping bottles or anything. Oh, the cocktail uh, stuff? Yeah. Um, but if someone wants... Um, a little show like a, a flaming drink like we'll do like some orange peel with a little cinnamon and light that on fire Oh nice and then you know torch that on um uh, an orange or a, a lime uh, Pinwheel or something like that. That's okay. but as as far as um, An actual cocktail that does not come to mind that all right Is something that we wouldn't make fair tell me about the industry as a whole you said that there have been more b mobile bartenders that came on the scene mm -hmm. Why? Are there more events or more people or people see it's, it's easy money or? It's, a lot of people start it as a side hustle as I did. Okay. Um, but it's just being more popular, more lucrative. Um, I actually went to uh, a mobile bartender conference in um, Nashville, Tennessee last year um, from November 7th through the 10th. Um, There's and a it was conference awesome. for mobile there bartenders. Is a, there is a conference. There's a conference for everything. Yeah. Okay. And it, it was it was four days of just bliss and awesomeness. All right. Um, and I learned so much from every you know Sarah Rhonda there. Um, I'm going to share this with them. <laughs> who, but you have to help me. Who that is? Uh, Sarah Murphy and Rhonda Kamen. They um, they uh, Rhonda Kamen does um, perfectly cordial. She has her own line of um, uh, mixers. Yeah, nice. and they're very awesome. All right. And then Sarah Murphy um, owned a mobile bartending company mm -hmm. as well, but now she is focused on just um, educating mobile bartenders. All right. Mm -hmm. On how to serve, how to sell. How to run an actual mobile bartending company. All right. Mm -hmm. And she nice. does coaching as well. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. And have you, I guess you've been in business 15 years? Yeah, this will be our 15 years anniversary this year. That is incredible. Yes. That's incredible for any business, mm -hmm. let alone mobile bartending business and mobile bartending business after dinking around with the COVID thing. Yeah, surviving COVID. <laughs> yeah, that had to be a challenge. I mm -hmm. imagine not too many in-person venues. No. <laughs> or events happened. No, especially when um, it just really hit us hard when, you know, it was like, you know, if we have a wedding with 350 people, mm -hmm. and then now they're saying, oh, you can only have 25 inside or 50 outside. That's where, um, but we only had two cancellations and everyone else rescheduled. So, wow. you know, out of like 80 weddings that were scheduled, yeah. just, you know, unfortunately losing two, um, but being able to reschedule those right. um, was uh, promising. Wow. Well, the other two probably didn't work out, right? I, I don't know. That's, <laughs> that's not for me. To Who play. knows? They're lost. They're <laughs> lost. All right. Well, that's cool. So I imagine that makes this year crazy busy. We're getting a little bit busier. A uh -huh. lot of it is um, layover from, we actually have layovers from 2020 and 2021 wow. that are, are tying the knot this year. All right. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So people held off their wedding or they held off the celebration? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. All right. Yeah. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Different world. <laughs> <laughs> Different world. What are some of the challenges that you've had to deal with over the course of 15 years? It's a long time. <laughs> uh, challenges. I don't see really any challenges as far as just making sure that people take me seriously. Okay. Um, a lot of people didn't know that I owned the business. All right. And it was just kind of um, taken aback, like, yeah, you know, I, I own the business. This is, you know, what I do. And, you know, these are the people. I didn't have employees at the time. I had independent contractors. Mm -hmm. um, so just... Um, just people making sure that they know that, you know, who I am, I am here to help them. Yeah. Um, things of that nature. Uh, again, the, the, the worst that happened, again, was um, in 2019, um, I fell ill. And then when in February of 2020, I fell ill with COVID. Okay. And um, I am still dealing with brain fog um, and long-term tiredness. Mm. Um, but again, having those rock star employees, they really help me out, nice. um, but I am able to go on, um, you know, some gigs. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I did resume my in-person cocktail classes this month, oh. um, so I'm doing that as well. Nice. But um, but yeah, having to go out um, and and work, you know, twelve-hour days, you know, mm -hmm. I I don't have to do that because you know my employees. Um, right. That's what you have a crew are really for. cool. Yeah. All right. And typically, your crew's working nights and weekends, I imagine, right? Yeah, usually anywhere, usually Thursday through Sunday. So Thursdays are our Mondays. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Not a whole lot going on Tuesday for events. I, I mean, like not that. not really, but, you know, Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, Wednesdays are becoming more popular um, for some corporate gigs, but a lot. Um, but still, there are a lot of people still working from home. So there's Fun. not, mm -hmm. you know, the, the corp our corporate gigs are not... Um, what they used to be. All right. Is it <clears throat> tougher to find a corporate gig than it is to find a wedding? Or is it they all find you more or less the same? They they usually find us more or less the same. Okay. Um, we get a lot of referrals all right. um, from a few of our, our corporate um, people that have been with us for like five years or more. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they have uh, making sure that people know who we are and they we have a word of mouth, basically. Okay. And what are some of the things that you've learned over the course of 15 years, just in business in general, that maybe when you first started off, you didn't necessarily know? Uh, making sure that people know uh, our professionalism and our value okay. um, of Bartender 608. Um, some people think, uh, like for a wedding, they think that the venue is the most important. Of course, the food, mm -hmm. uh, the ambiance. But you really can't skip on the bar because after the ceremony is over, that's where people make a bum rush to. Totally. Um, anybody can pour Jack and Coke and bring, you know, a case of beer. But you want it to be an experience. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that everything is in its place. Uh, people um, are able to order whatever they like with the spirits that they have. Mm -hmm. And that you want the presentation and the professionalism and the knowledge um, from your bartenders uh, to be on point as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. What's been your favorite gig so far? I really like going to Bridal Bar and Gardens with Pam out in Mount Horeb. Okay. And then um, Prevailing Winds Lodge out in Blue Mounds. All right. They usually have a big tent on the prairie, and it's just it's, uh, sunset. It's just very oh, pretty and awesome. Right. So it's just cool vibe? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, it's interesting. I worked at a movie theater for longer than I should have. But I loved it because, one, the other employees that I was working with were super cool. Mm -hmm. But I also loved uh, being the entertainer. Mm -hmm. Like, I was working behind the concession stand, a little bit movie um, usher and stuff like that. Back then, we didn't, we didn't have quite the fancy theaters that oh. we have now. Uh, we didn't have recliners back then, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it was so much fun being behind that counter and just hustling yeah. Friday night, Saturday night. And I remember my manager, who ironically enough was a crazy drunk. Very sharp guy, though. Even when he's drunk, he was sharp. Oh. And he's like, it's always better to work at a theater than a restaurant. Because the theater, people are happy. Mm -hmm. In a restaurant, they're tired and hungry. <laughs> so he's like, Friday night... The restaurant has dealt with them. 
now they're happy. They're happy and oh. fed. They come to the theater. So it always reminds me of the bar. Because mm -hmm. like you're dealing with people that probably are happy. If not, they will be soon. <laughs> <Exactly>. Whether um, <laughs> chemically enhanced or not, right? <laughs> but it's like it's a happy thing. You're not, it's not some crematorium or something like that. <laughs> like it's a, it's a happy thing, which is fun. It's got to be a fun gig. Yeah, fun it is. Gig. It's, um, uh, I still get nervous. I'm in bartending. Nervous? Ah, I've been bartending for almost 30 years. And All right. I still get nervous before gigs. It's not a nervous, like, is something going to go wrong? It's a nervous, it's like, you know, like an athlete. It's like game time, you're getting hyped right. up, you know, you're ready to go, like, this, this, and this. Like, we're loading up the vans, and, you know, we're picking up the ice, and then mm -hmm. we get there and everything. So it's just like, you know, that edge of the nervousness doesn't really taper off until, like, 45 minutes after we start opening up the all bar, right, you know, right. so we got our groove in, we're like, yeah. all right, so, and then the well-oiled machine is, you know, I like it's that. there. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I used to deal blackjack to venues and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and I remember there was the, the preparation, and then there's kind of a waiting game mm -hmm. where you're waiting for the crowd to get, you know, their little, who's ever giving their speech or wedding, whatever they're doing to come in and then you get the rush and then you get that flow. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it was fun once you got the flow. Yeah. But before then, yeah, it's just like. You're just like, you know. I feel like you're sitting in the space shuttle just waiting <laughs> for the launch. You're like triple and quadruple, ch quadruple yeah. checking the list. We have everything yep. that we have, you know. We have the ice packs on the garnishes. You know, we have, you know, just making sure All we have everything. All this build up. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. this build up, but you know that you prepared so much. Yeah, absolutely. That it's, it's almost, you're, Almost hoping that something goes wrong just so you have something to do. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's just me. It's just me. <laughs> cool. Um, well, now, remind me, China Moon is one word. Yes. Okay, so China Moon, how can people find you? They can find us online at bartender608.com. All right. Um, we're everywhere, social media, Facebook, Instagram, all right. Twitter, all of that. We're also on WebPlan. Okay. Yeah. Web plan is a website. It's a, a web uh, a, a website and an app for people who are having um, weddings oh, nice. in the southern Wisconsin area. All right. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. And six oh eight is the numbers, not spelled out. Correct. They're 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 six oh eight. The numerals. All right. Bartender six oh eight. No spaces. Correct. All right. Just got to clarify, right? <laughs> um, what is some advice that you could think of to give to people that would be considering starting a business of any kind? Um, make sure that you have the dedicated time to devote to that because it's not, again, it's, it's not just schlepping ice and, and, and pouring beer and wine. Mm -hmm. It's an actual business. You know, you have to deal with the insurance and the bookkeepers and the inventory. Ah. <laughs> uh, making sure you have a good crew, that you don't have people that are going to do no call, no shows. Mm -hmm. You have to have people that are enthusiastic because, again, this is someone's special event, whether it's graduation, wedding. Um, for example, we have a Kentucky Derby party coming up. You know, you really? Yeah. Oh, so nice. these, these are not a, these are events that you know you will do all the time, but it's their special day. So you can't make it um, a redundant like we do this all the time. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you are, you know, up and make sure that you have systems in place to work for you. Um, for example, uh, I now save twenty five hours a week. <laughs> Yes, I say wow. 25 hours a week with our new quoting system, EventSense. So when people go to my website, they fill out the quote form. The second form is EventSense. They can actually pick and choose what they want in their package. All right. And then we'll schedule a 15-minute call. And then it, that, uh, that alone saves me 25 hours a week. 25 hours a week? Do you know what that does <laughs> for business when you can save that amount of time? Oh, my gosh. That would be liberating. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. And how did you come across that? Um, uh, a gentleman who owns it named Joel Black. Mm -hmm. um, I was introduced to him through Sarah, Mof Sarah Murphy, the, the, the lady from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through his uh, demo, and I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Take my money. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That is cool. I'm excited for you. Where do you see Bartender 608 going in the next 10 years? Uh, I see us um, in a number of variety of states. So we serve uh, three states now. 
Um, but we may be moving westward, but that's under the cap right now. All right. <laughs> yeah, don't tell anyone. <laughs> All right. All right, westward, because you'll be moving westward, or? Nope, I'll just have, I'll have, um, not a franchise, but I'll have some offices out there. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm excited to see where you take this business. Me too. And congrats, 15 years, that's incredible. Yes. <laughs> that's, man, I've talked to a lot of businesses um, over the years, and the five-year hurdle is a big one. 10-year mm -hmm. hurdle is rare. Yeah. 15 years, that's impressive yep. for any business especially small business, surviving COVID. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. Can you tell us that website one more time, China Moon? Absolutely. It's bartender608.com. Bartender608.com. Easy enough. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. We are underwritten locally by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening or watching this on the web, which you probably are, if you could do us a huge favor, smash that thumbs up and of course subscribe. <clears throat> and of course, comment below and let us know where you want to see China Moon, China Moon and her crew <laughs> serving drinks, right? Absolutely. Or just come visit, crash a wedding. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> Bad advice. James told me to, right? My name is James Cademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering services for service businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com. And Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs looking for growth. And of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. Oh, what do you got here? We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, China Moon, the owner of Bartender 608. Can you tell us that website one more time? Absolutely, bartender608.com. It doesn't get easier than that. <laughs> Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night. The podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business.